Kitco News special coverage of the AIBC Summit is brought to you by Coin Payments. Crypto payments made easy. How are cryptocurrencies and the creator economies intertwined today? And what is the future of the metaverse in relation to the creator, both the influencer and the brand? We're here to talk about these issues and other hot topics with our next guest, Uma Hagengut, who is the co-founder of a very interesting company. I'll let you talk about it. Sure. Thanks for the intro and pronouncing my name <laughs> in German way. Apex is a yes. company you founded when you were 18, I believe. I believe so. It was in 2018. I'm now 25. So yeah, you, you do the math. Okay. Uh, I don't want to do the math. It's too early okay. in the morning. All right. No All right. But you were relatively young. So I want, to, I want to talk about your journey as an entrepreneur. But first, I want to talk about uh, Apex, what it is that you do. And then we'll drill a little bit deeper into the various aspects of the problems that you are trying to achieve. Absolutely. So, or solve, rather. Solve. Yeah, sure. So Apex, the company has evolved over the years, which is really interesting because, I mean, the space is evolving so quickly, right? Um, in the beginning, we saw an issue because our background is like being a social media and marketing agency, helping companies get from uh, basically web zero into web two, right? Uh, from web one to web two, um, creating, a, you know, having an online presence, um, growing online, building yeah. automated tools. So that was our background. We saw the issues with traditional social media. Um, and my co-founder and the CEO, you know, he's been in the space, he's a pioneer. He was mining Bitcoin, Litecoin in like 2012. Um, and he, you know, got me introduced. I learned about Bitcoin and blockchain, the concept of it in 2014. Um, but then in 2016, which was when the first blockchain came out that essentially um, allowed you to turn like interactions, sharing content, voting on content into currency. Um, that's when for me, a real use case came out where I was like, wow, this has potential to reach mass adoption, right? So, and we saw the issues with traditional social media, centralized um, corporate platforms, where 100% of the value is just with, within the company, it's with the shareholders and the users are the product being traded between the company and the advertisers, but the users who generate the value in the first place don't really get anything in return, right? Unless you're a top tier influencer, but then you still have to sell the audience of your, um, your audience, right? And so we turned that model around and we said, let's build a, um, a social media platform based on a decentralized reward system where users can interact on the platform and they get instant, instantly rewarded. So we also have our native uh, token, the APX token that is uh, included into the platform. And so that was what we were, we were doing originally. But now the space has evolved and so have, have we as a company. So I would say now we're more of a Web3 development company and we um, have the platform, but we also have an NFT marketplace so that we are integrating it into the content aspect so that users can also have ownership of their content and can decide if they just want to post it as content or actually mint it as an NFT and then um, have people sort of uh, s sell and, and um, buy content. Um, so that that's another layer. And yeah, now more recently in the last year and a half or so, we've gotten into also the 3D immersive worlds and technologies um, because we're just looking at where's the future of social interactions going of social platforms and how do we make it more immersive while staying it, at the core of what blockchain is all about, right? Which is decentralized. If someone were to say to you, Uma, I think that Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, these are centralized social media platforms. Yeah. Would you agree with that statement? Absolutely. Okay. Because I'm reading this coin telegraph article that uh yeah. talked about your company you did a feature feature piece with them early in the year and it was highlighting some problems that influencers and content creators are facing today what are some of the biggest challenges that content creators on any of the social media platforms that i mentioned face whether it be uh, somebody with a thousand followers or somebody with 10 million um, there's several issues, right? I think it's become more and more prominent and people are now really aware of it because big creators, even like, you know, PewDiePie and like these big YouTube yeah. creators have been complaining about it that they're being stripped of, you know, ads. Um, they, there's no really, you know, the freedom of speech is being taken away. Con is being taken down. Accounts are being banned, uh, especially in the crypto world. We know that shadow bans are, are very common. Um, another huge issue is with content creators from different parts of the world um, because it is super unjust as to how ads spend um, works because if you're from a, another part of the world but you're producing the same amount of content you have the same amount of followers and views you still get paid less and just a, a very small percentage in like for example South America or in Africa if you're you know a content creator there versus you're from the United States or, or Europe so it's, it's it's very unfair the whole system well, that's just because the AdSense in that region pays you less on a CPM basis right exactly but why should that be if you're a content creator and you're creating you're putting in your the exact same amount of time is your time 
you know, worth less? Why is your time, your creativity, and your, um, you know, the value you bring being is, is being valued um, less? How do we fix that problem? Um, we do that by just not having. Besides moving to America. <laughs> we did not move to America, but uh, no. So I think the way you do it is by not looking at division and creating a division between different countries and different continents. But just we have a platform. Everybody is welcome, and no matter where you are uh, from in, in the world, you can share content. You can vote on content. The reward um, system is the same. If you post a picture, no matter where you're from, and people start voting on it, 65% of whatever value is generated goes directly to you as the content creator, and 25% is actually split among the voters and 10% goes to the platform. So even if you're just a voter, you're a fan, no matter where you are from in the world, you'll also get something in return. Okay, so let's let me let's role play here. Let's let's break this down. So let's say I am a social media influencer, I'm a TikToker, whatever, whatever have you. Let's say I post music stuff, okay? And I come to you, Uman, and I say, I'm not getting enough engagement, or I feel like I'm not being paid uh, commensurate to the amount of time I spend on the yeah. platform. How do you help me here? Very simple. You come onto the platform, and um, you can, you know, obviously bring bring your own audience, but you're also going, you're going to be exposed to a new type of audience, um, and they're incentivized for engaging with your content in the first place. So if they think your content is valuable, they will upvote it, and based on their upvotes. After 30 days, um, our smart contract, so our technology, recognizes how many votes have been placed by who and then calculates the amount of rewards of our token that should be allocated to that post. So let me simplify it. We as a company, we have a set reward pool and every month it refills and goes out to the community. And the community, the users, are like a decentralized jury and they just decide on how that reward pool should be distributed. Okay, let's let's take a step back and shift gears. Just talk about yeah. social media for a few minutes and the development of social media. Some would say that um, critics of social media platforms would say that the whole incentive scheme of liking content, um, sharing content, it presents sort of this popularity contest that's psychologically unhealthy to younger people. How would you respond to that? Absolutely. I mean, look, I wouldn't say it's unhealthy. Technology, just like any other tool in the world, is neither good or bad. It's how you use it, right? Um, and, and the same applies like to blockchain, the internet, social media. It's a tool. It can it can really you know help you to um, to to get a greater voice, to reach more people, to have a greater impact, and do great things in the world. But it can also be uh, destructive. And I think these a lot of these companies have been so focused on their own business model and generating revenue that um, they forgot about the core of what a social platform is about. It's about connectivity and, um, you know, it should be about the users, but it has turned into uh, an, an ad platform, right? Because the attention is there. And so the attention of the user is being monetized, but they don't get anything in return. And you're being looped into these algorithms that essentially you don't have any control over, right? Um, I mean, yes, you could say... Which social media platform do you think currently has the highest RPM for, uh, for, for, for uh, creators right now? Uh, TikTok, probably. Okay. Okay. Are you just talk about TikTok for a minute? There's these um, within. Uh, I have to say, within our Western world, right? Within your Western yeah. world, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Um, YouTube actually does pretty well. Uh, I know because yeah. I'm on YouTube, but uh, for that's for more for longer term, uh, longer form videos. Now TikTok. There's these articles I'm reading about uh, concerns of the Chinese government using TikTok's algorithm to potentially, where well, they could have the ability to manipulate the algorithm such that they only show Western people certain things and they brainwash us, basically. Is that is that a real concern or is that just fear-mongering from the media? Look, I think there's always that concern. If there's no real transparency and you don't know how the system is how the algorithms where the algorithms are being created in the first place, right? You're trusting the company. And I think this is what the space that we're in is about. Web3 is about where you don't have to rely on the trust and what, what somebody tells you, but it's more open, right? All the transactions are recorded on the blockchain. You can see somebody who has more stake tokens and thus more influence on the platform. And um, I, I think that, and that, and that, that's, that's the main problem, right? Because we don't know how these com companies really um, operate. And there's a lot of speculation, right, about corruption and all of this. Um, but what, do you really, what can you really do about it? And so for us, it's more about how do we create alternative systems where you can still do exactly that. But if you, if you, if you want to have more independence over your earning, over your content and all of that, then just try, you know, using alternative more... Web3-based social platforms. Okay. 
but it still doesn't solve the problem of of people having more clout controlling the system, does it not? I think there's always going to be, right? Like there's always going to be a level of um, having different influence and you need that. Because if you have a platform that is just like, for example, everybody, you know, can vote on whatever content and there is no trending content, there's no quality filter, then uh, it's not fun to be on You the are an expert of, on social media, so I have to ask you about some of the biggest social media news and the headlines today. Twitter, just today I'm reading the headlines, <laughs> complete utter uh, disaster going on. I was going to use more colorful language. 75% of the remaining workforce that has not been laid off now quit. And uh, I've also been reading tweets that uh, employees cannot get back into the office. They've been locked out for security reasons. The fear is that they're going to sabotage the company. Elon Musk promised to hire a new CEO soon. Hasn't done that yet, but he's looking for one. What's your take on all this? What's going on with Twitter, one of the largest social media platforms in the world? Oh, wow, that, that's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> there's, it's a lot of directions I, I can go into here. But I think I'll just keep it short and say, um, I think what, what's happening right now is disruption in a lot of places, right? It's, it's, it's not just Twitter, like in, in, in the entire space with the exchanges and, you know, not, not to now go, go down another rabbit hole. Um, but I think a lot of disruption is happening right now and people are waking up to the fact that we need change in some way or another and change is happening. Um, and and it's, I think right now is a perfect time to look at why are we using certain platforms, right? For, for what are we using certain platforms? And, um, you know, what, what Elon Musk does and, and who the employees will be in the future, you know, that's, that's a whole other story. Um, but I think Twitter in and of itself is a really, really powerful medium. Um, but even there, it's a question of, do you want that to be, you know, the one monopoly or maybe where we should move more to a space where when something happens, it doesn't have so as much of an impact let's because take that, let's take yeah. that as an example. Um, suppose Twitter were just a DAO system where everybody right. just votes and allows things. Then you get worst case, you get a mess of people posting hateful comments that maybe you would find offensive or somebody else might offensive, but I would think it's okay. Now, Twitter currently has moderators or had moderators that vetoed out or vetted out comments that they deemed in inappropriate or offensive, and they've removed certain people, um, like Kanye West, who was later put back on for, uh, I don't know, I, I don't think he was put back on, but he was removed, he was suspended for, you know, citing anti-Semitic remarks. Uh, and many people say, rightly so. My point is, would you want moderators to, a centralized system of moderators to control content, or would you want a completely decentralized, autonomous system that is a perfect example of free speech, which in itself would come with problems? Yeah, and uh, that's a very good question. And I think, um, I, I never said, and this is one thing, you know, I'm, I'm, I believe, I'm a true believer in centralization or points of centralization are not necessarily bad, but it's the corruption of it. And having a base, like have the foundation on a decentralized level, but if you have moderators, right, that have been, again, maybe voted in through the community, they have gained their respect, they have gained their authority, then it's absolutely fine to have people that are able to detect when something goes wrong or, you know, certain content um, doesn't comply with the, with the uh, terms of the platform. There's free speech platforms, but with Apex, for example, how we're doing it, um, we're not so focused on trying to make it the most, you know, just fully decentralized um, platform, but it's based on a decentralized reward system, stake weighted, meaning the more stake you have, the more uh, influence you have over the upvotes, but also a downvoting system, right? So you can flag content that's inappropriate and then get content be stripped from rewards and removed. And what we've seen is actually more engagement than on any other platform that I've seen. Um, because people are incentivized. If you're now writing comments, right? And you're, you're just a troll, then you're gonna be downvoted in, in like so quickly because people don't like- Trolls are a necessary part of social media. They definitely help engagement and they help with, uh, with uh, the algorithm picking up. That's an unpopular opinion, respond. No, I agree. Um, but here's the thing, right? Trolls have their place, but now when you, when you, when you see a troll comment, is it going to get a lot of support or maybe our people are going to go against it because they believe that actually this content, like this comment doesn't deserve to now be on the top trending and you get rewarded for it. Internet fights are the best thing. They're better than MMA fights in my opinion. I want to talk to you about uh, your journey as an entrepreneur and we'll finish up there. Sure. So you've started uh, working for yourself for basically your entire adult life. What are some of the biggest challenges that you've had to overcome as your own boss? 
Um, challenges, patience, <laughs> probably number one. Um, just being patient um, with people, you know, the company, your market. It's, it's always growing and evolving, but especially in software development, things take longer. You have to be able to adapt as well um, as changes come. Be flexible in your approach and don't be too stubborn on funding. your one vision. Did you have problems with funding at all? So funding is an interesting topic because we're self-funded, right? I mean, uh, we had a, a brief token sale in like 2018, but um, everything that we've built now is self-funded. Um, and my co-founder and CEO, like I said, we've been pouring uh, a lot in of our own uh, money that we've earned to, um, to, to bring these things to life. So really what it is, is passion projects. Um, you know, especially my co-founder who was, you know, he made millions before he was 18 and still said, you know, he could have just said, okay, I'm gonna, you know, chill on an island, but he had a bigger vision. Yeah. And that was really to bring more, uh, to bring the benefits of blockchain and the emerging technologies that we have today to the masses which everybody's struggling to do, right? You have the people that have maybe the marketing and like the NFT hype and everything. You have people that are into the, the tech and they have really good tech stack and developers, but uh, rarely do you find companies that uh, operate from a place of uh, good intention, of you know, empathy, of, uh, of passion, and have both the tech side and the uh, mainstream marketing knowledge. Final question. Yeah. Again, you're a social media expert. When uh, I was in high school ages ago, Facebook was a new thing. Everyone was logging on Facebook, making their profiles. Before that, it was MSN and um, other things. But Facebook was the first real social media network that I remember growing up as a kid. Now, nobody I know uses Facebook. They use products of Facebook, right? Like yeah. Instagram, for example, WhatsApp, of course. Uh, these weren't created by Facebook, they were bought out. What is next for social media? You saw one of the largest tech giants pivot because they know their own platform is no longer popular? Yeah, I love the question. Where do I see the space of social media headed? Um, you know, and I don't want to like now put out this buzzword, right? I think the, the term metaverse is a buzzword, but what we're moving towards is more immersive experiences because especially through the pandemic, you can see that people want more uh, presence. They want to be connected with other humans, right? Have real uh, feeling of social, like this is why how, how Clubhouse, right, came out and uh, for, for a couple of months was, was the new trend. Um, people want to be in a room together and, and go back to the basics. And so I think um, we're going back to how you, social media used to be, but with new technologies in a completely new way. And this is also why we then started working and building with Unreal Engine 5, Blender. We bought two motion tracking suits and this is where we see the future headed, but it's, you know, again, everything has their timeline. It's not now, um, and, but, but it's really about what do we want as a community, as the people, how do we want the, what do we want the future to look like? I'd encourage people to check out Apex. I think your colleague showed me a video of uh, her dancing in a, in a, in a, in a, in a motion yeah, tracking track suit with an avatar. avatar. Yeah, that's really cool. So you could do that on your platform. Yeah, I, like all my keynotes now, even here at the uh, ABC Summit, I just did, you know, my keynote like with my avatar in the background moving. And it's just, it catches the attention of people. Like all of a sudden you're invested into what's happening. Um, it's exciting again. And I think we're at that place, we're at a pivotal moment where different technologies are coming together to um, allow for like uh, 3D immersive experiences to come to life in real time, which is super exciting. And um, yeah, I, I can't wait to see you know how the future well, unfolds. I can't, to see you in the, can't wait to see you in the metaverse. metaverse, all right? Let's not say metaverse, but yeah, 3D immersive experience. I like physical rooms, but virtual rooms could be cool as well. Uma Hagenguth, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming on and good luck to your venture. Thank you, David, appreciate it. And thank you for watching Kitco News. I'm David Lin, stay tuned for more and don't forget to subscribe. Kitco News special coverage of the AIBC Summit is brought to you by Coin Payments. Crypto payments made easy.